okay so uh, contrast so if you had tried what happens if you add constant intensity to all the pixels right i hope you uh, tried it uh, yourself and uh, mathematically it would tell you that the contrast goes down i hope that is what you qualitatively observed as well okay but uh, let us move on beyond contrast the other image quality metrics that we uh, listed that we want to proceed towards is another very important one is resolution right so what do you, what comes to your mind i know you would have used this colloquially oh i got a cell phone right it has much better resolution right but did you really uh, give it a thought as to what could be the correct or what could be the most generalized meaning of resolution which can be applied to specific context so in your in your cell phone example for example oh i have very good resolution this is 8 megapixel camera is what you would have probably conversed with but does megapixel have and you know, how does that relate to your resolution right do you did you really pay attention to that so the question is what comes to your mind when it is resolution okay resolve resolution resolve what is so when you have uh, two objects right that come close together until which point you will be able to tell that these two are two different objects right that is your ability to resolve two objects so in fact we will carefully state it i will i will say what i mean by being careful about it how close right how close can two objects come why did i say careful i just said come i did not say the units right so in the imaging system at least what we have covered so far our axis our coordinate is space right so in space how close two objects can come so it can come in x direction it can come in y direction at least within the variables that we have used x and y were the spatial variables so how close can two objects come in those in space before they cannot be distinguished so that means you can already start to think about come close in space is spatial resolution come close in time ah right temporal resolution in fact you would have heard all this resolution frequency resolution spectral resolution i am sure you would have heard that right when you do time domain to frequency domain one of the things that we keep uh, you know paying attention to is your frequency resolution your spectral resolution how to how two frequencies in the spectra can be how close can they be before you say that is two different frequencies or is it just the same frequency that is a uh, little wider right so this resolution is a big picture and a big concept it is ability to separate two objects in this case we will consider spatial okay so that means uh, that is fine we'll do the same Uh, approach one is qualitative by by knowing the definition right by getting a feel for what resolution means can we qualitatively agree on what it means using some examples and then we have to quantitate i mean then we have to put some models some equations and then say okay from now on if i want to measure resolution if i want to talk about resolution i'm going to use this mathematical descriptor rather than english okay so first and foremost that is your resolution of course another way to look about it this is the brute force definition resolve two objects when coming close together but another way we have been using even in this class is when i showed you some images and we talked about blurring right blurring or smearing smearing i think we are using it first time in this uh, course so it can be thought of also degree of smearing or blurring we did show an example where the sharp edges were blurred and then we said this is to do with resolution right so blurring 
so it can be thought of as a degree of smearing or blurring okay a system introduces in a single event in space time or frequency why is that important in fact we in fact defined when we talked about uh, here it is smear it is blur but we also talked about spread remember so if you have one event instead of two events technically you have two events come close together you have to be able to say the system is able to say that this is a different object this is a different object if you have only one object right did we cover something ah if you can recall point right i i i put a point i said this is the ideal point infinitesimal solve but if you take a imaging system to image that point you may get a slightly bigger point basically a blurred version of that point right that's when we used so point spread function remember so essentially you can also think about resolution means it is some kind of smearing or blurring okay so if i can measure that that will also relate to resolution so i can think about it whichever way so we will see uh, we will cover in some sense given orientation in this intro part introduction part as a whole we can think about how all we can capture how all people try to uh, capture resolution defined resolution and then when we get to individual modalities we will relate the specific context so now what we will do is okay let's give some image example right and um, talk about whether we are able to appreciate resolution in the form it is defined same image same image we introduced to introduce different modalities we also introduced it in the last lecture as an example to comment about contrast now we are introducing this again to see if you can relate to resolution to, to when you look at this what do you think which image do you think has the poor resolution which Im Im image has the best resolution can you comment on that based on the definitions or rather descriptions of uh, resolution that we have covered so far well if you really look at it if i go by the first one right two objects where are my objects how do i define well i don't know so you can say my object could be uh, i see lines right i see this is an object so i see right i see this so oh, i can resolve the two sides left side uh, here also right i can see two parallel lines whereas so here also i can see right whereas in this image i cannot see that so clearly even though we observed that contrast was much better here in in pet the resolution is poor but you see the challenge if i have to then i have to define two objects and then see if they are close enough and uh, in, just because we can say that these two are resolved doesn't mean that's the resolution right result resolution means it is in the limit how close can two objects be before you say that i cannot see them as two anymore so here you have several places where you can see two that doesn't mean that is a, it is just resolving that but it need not be the resolution limits of the system okay another way to look at it is this one right blurring oh even that way if you look at it you can clearly see that this is poor resolution it is blurring the edges are really spread out the edges are really sharp here right so you can see that the mri has better resolution than your ct which has better resolution than your pet in in qualitative terms we still have not really captured any metric but qualitatively if by using these two a uh, sense of what resolution means either ways you look at it it is not that difficult to appreciate that this has this modality has better resolution remember i keep reiterating this because resolution also affects contrast that's why we are using the same image okay so let's uh, dwell a little bit more on this resolution idea okay so now what do we want to do fine we appreciate what intuitively we can feel what resolution is can we capture it how do i capture it the easiest way is 
brute force right easiest way is brute force what do i mean by brute force oh have a ground truth right make sure that you have two objects and you keep the two objects at different bring them as close as possible and each time at each location you take the imaging systems output and see at which point it ceases to be uh, seen as two objects that means quantitatively i have to measure the output of one object the other object and say right these two are different if i can do that in space then that's the brute force way of saying it so in order to do that we may introduce this idea of full width at half maximum why is this important well i i, I kind of say this this is just for convenience in the sense that i have object i have a object you know these are ideal objects that is it is at only one location it is infinitesimally thin for example this is infinitesimally thin at one location so i bring them close together but when it goes through the system this will have a spread this will have a spread right that's what the system introduces because of its resolution limits it's not ideal right so you will have so when you bring them close together you may still see the peak right but then you may not be able to contrast them as they get closer together so somewhere you have to draw a threshold and say look if it is greater than that value i can still say i can detect it okay so what typically is done is that definition each one can do in their uh, domain in their context people vary that threshold i'll i'll comment on that little more but generally this is a very good measure full width at half maximum is a standard way of using so essentially we have to just for the sake of explanation we are using only one direction x because uh, just to introduce the idea of resolution but you can imagine that this can same done at different direction why in fact if you assume the system is uh, isotropic right resolution in any direction is same then one direction that we use here is good enough again that may not be true all the times but at least to get the idea started this is fine so you have x1 and x2 these are ideal objects right you have two objects but then when you present it through the system that is spread out right there is going to be blurring so this is going to be spread out but if they are separated beyond their resolution limits i still will not have trouble in saying this is one object this is another object right if even though this is not thin right infinitesimally thin it has some still i don't have any ambiguity in saying these two are two different when they are here well i can still say here probably but when they come here right now depends on the resolution of the system right whether the system is able to present this as two objects or it is one fat finger right so if you are viewing it with a very poor uh, streaming system right your internet is poor it pixelated images you you may think that it is a one fat finger right so that is what is shown here so if they are able to separate right then there is no problem this is resolvable so the separation if you are able to make a threshold on the separation and say the separation allows me to differentiate these two as two different objects then that is resolvable here again the separation is sufficient for us to say there are two hills so now what is full width at half maximum maximum is this right so you can have half the maximum value the full width at half maximum so that is a length scale along x separation is a length scale along x the distance between these two objects in the direction you are measuring the resolution so it turns out we are doing linear systems so the moment it comes too close together this will all start to add up right 
you get the response from each of the points that are contributing so when you come just close enough to your full width half maximum you will see that this will try to go down this is trying to come up so both will start to add up so you will have subtle right two hills you won't see the two hills it will be kind of one fat shallow hill i mean uh, you know obtuse hill in fact if you push it any further you will kindly you will see only one hill with one one maxima right so somewhere here it is clear it is resolvable here it is resolvable here is when you start to question whether is it two hills or one hill that is having a flat contour or a very minimal valley here no issues i see only one hill right so that means if the distance of separation is greater than your full width at half maximum right then it is resolvable if it is barely separate that will be your resolution the limits of course if you cannot separate then it is beyond resolution limits you see the advantage of this operation like i mean very strictly speaking resolution as two objects has to come together but by using this full width at half maximum i could instead i could instead going forward i can actually have only one object and measure the present that one object to the system and measure the full width at half maximum and say that's my resolution you see so if i have a point and i have a point spread function then that is good if i can do a point i can measure the point spread function that gives so it actually makes it convenient instead of having two objects coming as close as possible to realize that may be a challenge right and so this might be a very good attractive no tool to measure your resolution using this definition of full width at half maximum of course you can do this for why you are just pretending that it is you no know, if it is isotropic it is going to be same in all directions which need not be the case for example if you take ultrasound right ultrasound we know that the resolution is good only along the direction of depth where you want the sound to go through or the wave propagation at high frequency in the other directions the resolution is poor so your spread will be more so it need not be uh, you know uh, uh, the full width at half maximum need not be same for all theta right so it depends on the modality but the concept is very powerful that you can use so what uh, we need to finally do is connect what we have introduced about resolution to what we already talked about in terms of transfer function modulation transfer function why modulation transfer function oh we introduced the idea of modulation function and modulation transfer function to essentially capture contrast but even that time we kind of alerted that when you how how was the uh, modulation transfer function typical modulation transfer function plot you had mt uh, f of u in y axis and u in x axis remember that was frequency and we observed a, a low pass filter behavior okay so clearly that and that time if you actually carefully observe the axis there you had a frequency axis and that can be written and that was written as go look at the units it was written as millimeter inverse okay so now you see that you have resolution is when two lines come close together right either peak or valley doesn't matter two ideal objects coming close together so can you now have a sense of how we want to attack the problem and relate the two concepts 
what did we do for modulation function we took a test signal to characterize the system's uh, modulation transfer function we took a test signal what was the test signal or oh, sinusoid right parallel by white black but it was so now it is all the you know imagination so if you imagine that i have several bars right and whatever sinusoid you saw is nothing but a blurred version of ideal object so i have 1 0 1 0 right target no target target no so i have some and that is repeated at certain frequency right the minimum separation of distance so you can and you can see the modulation function sinusoid that we showed right the plot of sinusoids that you can actually think about as a a blurred version of your objects right so you can intuitively sort of start to think that these two are related we reiterated several times but can we use the same formulation so we can use the same formulation if you think about a pure vertical sinusoidal pattern which is what we used sin of u not x right we used sin of u not x somewhere if that can be thought of a blurred image of uniformly spaced vertical lines so all i have is vertical lines so these are these are vertical lines okay these are vertical lines in fact it is similarly thin there is no oscillation so present absent present absent present absent but if i throw this ideal frequency right separated by certain distance if i put it through the system the system makes it as a, a sinusoid because of blurring so now that is the definition we could now connect our contrast and resolution okay so the distance between the lines is equal to the distance between the maxima or minima so now you can see how we are going to interpret this thought process of vertical distance how close two lines can be before they are seen as one line right two objects how close can they come before you see the system does not see them as two objects anymore so you can have them as close as possible by increasing the frequency if i increase the frequency the, it will come close together right so distance between the lines is equal to the distance between the maxima so therefore if the frequency is u not the distance is 1 by u not so if i want to reduce the space i can increase the frequency right so now this should naturally lead you to what we already observed so let's do that observation one more time so let's take f of x comma y is your test signal for simplicity again we are just doing a, a vertical direction the lines are in the vertical direction right so y is not there but that's just a, a simplicity the, you know the concept holds good even if you uh, write x comma y so b sin of u not x this we did and this we figured out g of xy is the output of the system when presented with the sinusoid okay which is you have modulation transfer function and this guy so what do we do now well somewhere we see that uh, we use this for contrast modulation transfer function and now we also see that there is this frequency and the inverse of that frequency the distance and which could essentially talk about the closeness or resolution aspect so if mtf of u is zero what does that mean the modulation transfer at a particular frequency is zero that means if i have vertical lines right as input the output i have zero there is there is no modulation is not transferred to the output what is happening that means that means whatever lines were there whatever frequencies were there was is is blurred so much that i don't see any vertical lines i see that everything is blurred and there is only one output right i don't see vertical lines anymore i give vertical lines input but if my mt at at certain frequency but if my mtf at that frequency is equal to 0 that basically says at the output i don't have any vertical lines anymore i just have one 
what what went in like like this out through the system i see two lines at the output it comes as so now at the output i don't see two lines i just see one fat line okay it's not able to resolve that's what this this uh, implies becomes all constant and one cannot see the different lines so if mtf of u first becomes zero at certain u suffix c what is that cut off frequency critical frequency right we use i mentioned that it is kind of a low pass filter so you can think about this as a, a cut off frequency so in the frequency terms it's easy right oh after that cut off frequency the system is not passing but our interpretation is in the length scale so the minimum distance between distinguishable lines is 1 by uc so if you make the lines any closer together any more than 1 by uc of the system then i won't be able to distinguish the two lines in the output that means that is my limiting resolve uh, resolution of the system any frequency lower than that i will be able to see it whether the amplitude comes through or not depends on the mtf behavior correct but at least the frequencies will be there or depending on the threshold of how you define whether you see the vertical lines or not you will see the uh, pattern clear so resolution is directly proportional to the stop bandage in mtf this is how we relate resolution and modulation transfer function life is very simple in simple cases so if you actually go back and look at the example mtf that we we have given so far right there was one with a hand x ray image of your hand where we showed uh, what happens if the mtf pattern changes right it was wide and falling down and it was becoming uh, falling off more rapidly and the third plot was it was very narrow and then we saw the effect and we commented that time that the contrast is poor and also the image is blurred so there is a relationship between blurring and uh, contrast uh, resolution and contrast right through the mtf but now so if i give you that plot you will be able to appreciate for co like contrast if it has similar pattern and if it is dropping off one is at uc1 another is at uc2 you will be able to quickly say oh, okay if uh, uc1 means if uc1 is less than uc2 you have better resolution with uc2 because that means you have more frequencies that are passing through the system okay that is not a problem what happens if you have the complicatedness in in all of the real practical systems is going to be not, you are not going to gain anything in absolute terms if you gain something somewhere you have to compromise somewhere else okay Am amongst the image quality metrics okay so you don't really have much problem if the mtr mtf have similar shape we can comment the challenge is going to be what if you are going to get a response like this essentially you have a system one that is characterized to have a mtf with a solid black line that you see and a system two that is characterized to have a mtf so which one will you choose right oh looking at it you will say oh you know what uh i want higher resolution and so i will go for system 2 but then you clearly notice that until this point right your response is better with respect to your system 1 that means the contrast is going to be better with the dark contrast and resolution go together right if if there is a good contrast then maybe i will be able to differentiate the two uh objects right whereas here the contrast goes down technically maybe the resolution might be good uh at least the higher frequency that i can see might be um more the the you know the dynamic range might be more with system 2 but if this frequency is presented in the image system 2 will be poorer compared to the output system 2 will be poor compared to system 1 so you notice the challenge that means depending on what you want 
so if i want high contrast then i would uh, and if i know my uh, object frequency is going to be the frequencies that are present in the object that i want to image is going to be somewhere less than this guy i would rather go with the system 1 i won't go with system 2 but if i have more frequencies in the object then i might go with system 2 of course we we'll have to look at what the system one the system two these could be you know same system physically but one setting this could be another setting so in which case this is where your job as an engineer will come into picture can i come up with oh i have this instrument that is given to me i know the physics i want to increase the application i want to you know make sure that i the the imaging system is good depend uh, irrespective of the, which frequency is presented as wide a frequency content as possible should be uh, imageable with that system then you might come up with two different algorithms and uh, you know combine these two right you can combine these two or do something like that so that's where the real challenge comes in. so for all practical reasons this is a conflict that you will be encountering so you need to really understand how what aspect of this system one contributes to this response and how i can engineer it to my advantage so the understanding of this is critical because it is not going to be a one way street okay and uh, that will be the hope of this course when we introduce specific modality we will use the same um you know metrics and there we will contextualize this with respect to the physics and instrumentation of the modality and therefore you will be in a better position to comment on how to improve the image quality or at least tell why the image quality is dropping out what are the factors okay good so that is with respect to your difficulty in commenting on your uh systems uh, capability because uh you may not have one system that can be good in all situations okay so now again in some sense it's a continuation you can actually start to look at the previous slide and you had system 1 and system 2 right so now the question is uh if i break the system into a cascade of system which is not difficult right i mean we talked about this even when we talked about the system h system impulse response we talked about uh, cascading of the system and we talked about how h1 convolved with h2 all the commutative property associative property right parallel uh, in series we talked about that so here when we talk about cascade of system what happens to the resolution so before we just put what it is again this is pretty intuitive so take for example in fact i started with that example uh, at the beginning of this lecture but let me now give a, a, a more uh, you know better background of what i mean by that so i have a microphone and i have a marker here i keep them next to each other right i keep them next to each other so the question is how many subs so you are you are looking at the image and the idea is can you able to separate the two objects right take it from me that i have kept them these are two different objects and i have tried to keep them close to each other but ground truth is these are two different objects i am not tricking so now the question is are you able to resolve these two as two different objects so if you actually look at the process what happens is there are two physical objects which are captured by the camera that is recording this video right and that video feed is taken to uh, the pc right so that the audio and the video can be integrated and that feed is processed in the pc and it is uh, saved in some format right and then it is uploaded on to
to website for example youtube after that it is coming over the internet you download it right or view it online and then your pc or your for cell phone whichever you are using that is going to read the data and display it in its screen depending on its uh, uh system specification and then you the final end observer are looking at that video and making out whether you are able to resolve or not so a simple system is not one system right you have several sub you can start to see that as several subsystems so this recording camera that has a specification that has a resolution did it see these two as two different objects in the first place right did it capture so there is a mtf there so it has its mtf then you get the data into pc and then uh, if there are some uh, filters that the uh, video is processed right i am sure they are doing some processing and integrating all the audio and video so they are doing some smoothing equalization so there is some loss so there is a subsystem there there is a loss there is a mtf there and then to your pc uh, and then network bandwidth let's pretend that's coming through then your display your pc and your display device that system has a mt uh, mtf so what do you think would be the resolution of this system which is comprised this system as in the whole uh, there is 3d right i have two ground truth here i have two objects you are viewing at the video so this is input what you are viewing is the output everything in between is the system right so that means that is characterized by mtf of you now i am saying that system actually is composed of a series of or a cascade of subsystems so now the question is what is the resolution of the system which is composed of several subsystems what do you think will it be more less same so common sense tells without knowing much technicality common sense tells if you have your pc if you have your phone and you know you've dropped the phone couple of times right and you have a uh, poor display you won't be able to see right but you cannot complain that this whole mooc old nptel system right the system that is capturing the input and presenting remotely virtually which are is poor it is not able to resolve the pen with the microphone it is only your phone so sub system that is poor in this case right because you broke you put it down and you broke the screen or similar thing you have poor internet the streaming quality is poor right data size is reduced and therefore you are not able to see it so you cannot complain the the whole system is bad right but there is a fact fact is the whole experience of using this system will be poor right so even if there is one subsystem that is limiting then the whole system is limited no matter if i have a great panasonic camera that is recording doesn't matter if i talk about this as a subsystem it has its own response so be it but if i see a, a full system as a cascade of subsystem then the weakest guy or the poorest guy determines my limits of the whole system that's that's true with everything right so it's it's common sense is sensuous answer so let's see how we you know put it in terms of the plots that we have seen so far and try to explain so subsystem relate subsystem 1 2 3 to the different subsystems that i gave you as examples in the um, uh, video recording system this is medical imaging system right so you have subsystem 1 2 3 1 each one has its own response actually notice subsystem 1 is you know very wide or widest goes till 1.1 before it starts to drop okay 
whereas uh, subsystem 3 if you look at it it drops after point 8 and you see something like a subsystem 2 which uh, starts to drop but it drops at a slower rate than your subsystem 1 so it actually covers more frequencies where it is non zero right but what is the overall system overall system is coming here it's tracking the weakest guy right so from here the dashed line is not weakest this one becomes the weakest so it bends here and it falls too so if in some sense you look at it the overall system response is the poorest amongst the different things different subsystems that are shown clear so from the mtf you can clearly comment that your overall system response is always limited by the weakest individual response subsystem that is there in the cascade so if i want to uh, put it together i can talk about the effective resolution as square root of sum of squares of independent right subsystems resolution so if you actually look at it if r is the resolution in length scale right how close that means good resolution means length should be small poor resolution means length should be large right if i am not able to separate these two right that system has poor resolution than a system that can separate these two so r large means so you have to be very careful in when you when you read material how they define r but you know the idea of resolution and the uh, definition is spatial is what we are talking about how close the two objects can be in space so the units of resolution is um, in terms of length okay so um, r is in length scale so if you look at this formulation clearly you can see that if there is a it's a sum of squares so if there is a poor guy that means if there is a large r that is going to dominate this so if you are going to do small improvements here and there in one of the subsystem the effective subsystem's resolution will not change that much because there is a weakest guy he is going to dominate this sum of squares clear okay so much for uh resolution be very important concept i mean that's why i want to spend this time you don't get anything for free you have to really understand the concepts and how it is captured so that you can customize it for each imaging modality is going to have its own constraints uh, physics instrumentation constraints end user constraints right what is acceptable in one may not be acceptable in another because it's a host of different parameters that come into rescue so uh, you might be more tolerant with respect to resolution poor resolution in pet image because you are gaining something that you couldn't gain in other modality right but the same resolution you will not be tolerant or you will not be happy if i show a mri image okay so you need to really understand the basics so how do they do this right i mean this is fine but how do they typically do how do you calibrate how do you say the imaging system uh, resolution is uh, one thing or the other most of the times what they do is you have imaging system you have a ground truth so the example that i showed showed here with a pen and a microphone this is very arbitrary right this is okay for a concept but if every lab if every instrument has to be checked out right to calibrate it to say what resolution it has you better have everything else same only the system should be different that means your target the ground truth should be same the same environment you have one imaging system you take another imaging system you take a third imaging system all of them are trying to capture the same ground truth then you compare the output and say oh this is resolvable in this system this is not resolvable in the other system so that means it is important that you present to the system the same object with the same ground truth okay so how do they do it in that sense resolution of imaging system can be evaluated by imaging a bar phantom bar phantom is bars 
right nothing more it's just bar phantom means it's just a material that is created it's not real so bar phantom is you have several parallel bars that are there remember i told you you can imagine that sinusoid as a blurred sinusoid if you have bar so this is a bar so i can have uh, them precisely fabricated so that they are at different locations which is the ground truth right so mostly what they do is you have this called lp what is lp line pairs per millimeter so again for the purposes of demonstration these are just bars are horizontally oriented but you can have them vertically oriented also right i mean there is nothing sacred about it the, the thing is you have when there is horizontal bar you have some spacing between them so you have line pair per millimeter if you pass this calibrated bar phantom present it to the imaging system the output better be some bars similar looking bars whether the imaging system is able to right see this as parallel bars or see uh, or not see right for example instead of seeing it as parallel bars i am trying to shade i have not used this before let me yeah okay so the idea is okay so you are not supposed to see parallel bars here <laughs> that's the logic so maybe here the system you can see parallel bar input is a parallel bar output is a parallel bar so the imaging system is able to resolve it whereas here the input is bars that are parallel with certain lines per line pair per millimeter but the output is one flat image with red color it doesn't really see the parallel lines that means it's not able to resolve so if you present this so there is no is you can have a phantom which has parallel bars like that right close together even close together or in any direction just for simplicity i'm showing so it's called line pairs per millimeter so if you present this bar you can talk about resolution is the frequency remember now i told you uh, resolve in length scale but now if you use this bar they might say resolution is the frequency of the finest line group that can be resolved after imaging so it is now be line pairs per millimeter it's not length scale clear so you have to really understand how it all means the same if i say line pairs per millimeter that frequency it, you know in the length scale it is going to be 1 by that um, uh, separation between these two so you know you can get to that but you have to be careful with units depending on the setup what you have access to it will be uh, defined as is okay so resolution is the frequency in this case of in line pair per millimeter so if you look at this image let us see through our optical imaging system right our our eye system human vision i will say at least i can see this clearly line pair per millimeter so i have a better resolution than this one in fact i can see this also so i probably have a better resolution than that in fact i can see this here i can see that right here i am not able to see anything right so two lines per millimeter i think i can see it maybe you can also see it or if you are looking at it in the phone right and if you have it in 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 uh, you know very small font you may not be able to see so that's a different aspect point is depending on our human vision system we can see that we can relate if we are, if we are able to do this we can say i can see so many lines per millimeter so i can resolve these two right if you through see this through different imaging systems what are the typical numbers we get so if it is gamma camera you get 2 to 3 line pairs per centimeter this is in millimeter 2 to 3 line pairs per centimeter so gamma is what your pet right positron emission tomography we had one image color image that we saw right that is pet you can see how lousy right 2 to 3 line pairs per 
centimeter, whereas CT it is two line pairs per millimeter. Look at chest X-ray, which we have seen. Wow, six to eight line pairs per millimeter. In fact, you look at it, even at two point five, the way it is presented here, uh, we are not able to see. Right? I, I say we because probably you you are also able to see the two two point five is tricky. But chest X-ray, six to eight line pairs. So clearly, the resolution is good here. CT resolution is good. If you look back at the images we saw, we compared the CT and PET. Clearly, CT we were able to see some uh, you know uh, lines which we couldn't see in gamma camera. Uh, your PET image, right? There it was subjective. Now, if you do a calibrated study, you can actually come up with limits on. What is resolvable and what is not resolvable? Right, the concept is same. How close two objects can be before you say they are one? I mean, two different things before you lose to see them as two different things. So you have a phantom where it is placed at different closeness, at some closeness beyond which the system is not able to say. Right. Good. So um, we will quickly start with the next idea. Right, Res contrast, uh, resolution. Third one was noise. So noise, we'll just take a big picture view of noise. What is noise? Well, it is a signal. At least I like to think about it as a signal. But then, it is not. In 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 some sense, it is like it is coming when you measure a signal, but it is not related to a signal. So the undesired signal. Right, undesired measurements or the fluctuation around the ground truth that you want to measure, right? That is noise. Okay, a uh, type of random fluctuation that are not due to actual signal. I have an actual signal. When I try to measure the actual signal, this also happens, but this is not signal. So it 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 comes as a signal, but it is essentially a fluctuation around the signal. That is my noise. Okay, so any type of this random fluctuation gives rise to noise. So now the question is obviously it is detrimental. It is going to affect your image quality. Okay, so if you look at it, this is an image that we had. If you start to add more noise, right, by increasing the noise. You can clearly say that the image quality is poor. Why is in in what sense the quality is poor? Because I may not be able to start. I may not be able to. It affects both, right? Contrast, resolution, everything goes haywire. So it affects the image quality because I may not be able to either say. So take the extreme case. I may not be able to say where the nose is, right? Where the spinal cord is. I may not be able to say anything here. Leave alone uh, resolving two two lines, right? We may not be able to say even contrast out big picture, the the uh, medulla or the nose or the mouth. Yeah. So both contrast and resolution are affected, and the noise therefore affects the overall image quality. Okay, so this is an example of increasing noise. So what is important is. The source of noise. Problem is the source of noise depends both on physics of the modality, right? Physics and instrumentation of the modality. When I say physics and instrumentation of the modality, that means some things are inherent, right? Because of the nature of the signals that you are probing. The other one is your instrumentation. Instrumentation means is your measurement noise. Okay, so that is one thing. So you can have both. For example, right? In in uh, X-ray imaging, right? In X-ray image, you have something called as quantum model. This is not because of your measurement. This is because of the way the signal is generated. Okay, so that gives rise to that is because of the when we cover the physics in each modality, right? And then we will cover the image quality aspect in the end. That time we will we will connect this again. But for now, it is. Quantum model meaning there is some thing is happening because the X-ray is interacting, right? 
So, this is a physical phenomena. So, because of which the signal that is coming has some dictates some uh, fluctuations. So, which is called as quantum model. The other one is, right, then you are in the MRI, for example, you have thermal noise. Okay. So, you can have different uh, uh, sources for the noise, some dependent on the physics, some limited due to your measurements and instrumentation. Okay, so we will just do one big picture appreciation and then we will jump into quantitative. How do we measure the noise? Right? How do we model the noise? How do we uh, then infer about how to compare different uh, noise source? Right, All that we will do. But uh, clearly when we talked about image quality, we did contrast, resolution and we said through MTF, both contrast and resolution are interrelated. Now, we talked about noise. Clearly, we said noise is uh, uh, having an influence on the image quality. Is, uh, it's making the image quality poor. So, all the three should be related, right? So, in some sense, you look at it. This is an image of certain quality. If you either increase the noise, which is the first row, or increase the blurring. Either ways, the image quality is becoming poorer. Right? The worst thing is going to be going here and going here. Meaning, I have lot of noise and I have increased blur. Clear? So, I can have all, all of them are affecting the overall image quality. Okay. So, you may have, you may end up trying to reduce the noise, in which case sometimes you have to blur the image. Okay. So, if you look at these two, for example, right, this looks little blurred compared to this one. Right. Visually, if you look at these two, you might look at it and say, oh, this is increased noise, right. So, this is supposed to be more noisier than the preceding image. But if I compare these two, this actually has reduced noise, right? The speckle, the fluctuation is reduced. But then, here I see the lines are little sharper, whereas here it is blurred. Clear? So, there is a cost that is associated. So, I can increase the blurring, right? Perhaps reduce some noise or the other way. You don't get everything. You, you want to be here. But you are always going to be playing around whether you want to go here or here. You are going to be playing around within the constraints and the uh, what the instrument allows you to do. Okay. So, we will stop here. We will come back again. Continue further on the noise characterization. Thank you.